In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve a combustion analysis problem. Here's the problem that we're gonna work on. We have a 14.1 gram sample of a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is a molecule that contains carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms, and we don't know exactly how many carbon or hydrogen atoms we have in the molecule. That's why we're using X and Y in place of the subscripts, like maybe it's one carbon to four hydrogens, or maybe it's two carbons to six hydrogens. We don't know what the formula is, but this hydrocarbon is combustible in oxygen O2 gas. So let's take um, a minute to write what that actually looks like in terms of a reaction. So we have our unknown hydrocarbon C6HY and we are reacting it with some oxygen gas and the products of this reaction, of any combustion reaction, the products of the reaction are always CO2 and H2O. So even though we don't know exactly what the formula is of our hydrocarbon, we don't know exactly how many carbons or how many hydrogens we have, we know for sure that the products of the reaction are gonna be CO2 and H2O. In a combustion analysis um, lab procedure, you collect and measure the amount of carbon dioxide and water that's produced in the reaction. So this tells us that the reaction produced 38.8 grams of CO2, and it also produced 31.7 grams of H2O. And we're gonna use this data right here to figure out what the empirical formula is of our hydrocarbon. So as a refresher, because it's been a little while since we talked about empirical formulas, the empirical formula is just the, the simplest ratio of the atoms in a particular molecule. So this is just a ratio of the atoms in a molecule. It's different from a molecular formula uh, because a molecular formula gives you the exact number of atoms in a molecule. The empirical formula just gives you the ratio. So for example, C2H6 would be a molecular formula because it's telling us exactly how many carbon atoms we have and exactly how many hydrogen atoms we have. CH3 would be the empirical formula of C2H6 because it's giving us the ratio of the carbon atoms to the hydrogen atoms, one carbon atom for every three hydrogen atoms. So the combustion analysis um, procedure and data only gives us the empirical formula. It's never going to be able to give us a molecular formula, but that's fine. So um, let's actually just start looking at our data and figuring out how we're going to turn these masses into an empirical formula. So when we look at this combustion equation that I've written up here, even though this equation is not balanced, if we were gonna attempt to balance it, we can see from this equation that all of the carbon atoms in our hydrocarbon end up in the CO2 molecule. So however many carbon atoms we have in our hydrocarbon, whatever X might be, that's how many molecules of CO2 we produce. Let me use a different color here. So what I'm trying to make sure you understand is that all of the carbon atoms that we start with in our hydrocarbon, they're all gonna end up being collected in our CO2 molecule. So what we want to do ultimately is to take this um, 38.8 grams of CO2 and we want to turn that number into ultimately turn it into how many carbon atoms we have the number of carbon atoms that we're going to calculate will be the number of carbon atoms in our CO2 molecule and also the number of carbon atoms in our hydrocarbon and we have a similar kind of thing going on with our hydrogen atoms. So all of the hydrogen atoms that are ending up in our water molecule, all of those hydrogen atoms came from the hydrocarbon as well. So if we can figure out how many hydrogen atoms we have in this 31.7 grams of water, we'll know how many hydrogen atoms we started with. Now we can't, um, we're just really ultimately ignoring oxygen completely because all we're trying to figure out is the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. 
So now that I've talked about that a little bit, let's take a look at exactly how we're going to go about converting the 38.8 grams of carbon into the number of carbon atoms that we have in this particular molecule. So um, this treat this now just like any sort of unit conversion problem, similar to problems that we've done in the past, even though we've never used our skills for a problem quite like this. We're going to approach this problem in the exact same way. We're going to start by writing the thing that we know, and what we know is that we have 38.8 grams of CO2, and we know that we don't want to have that unit anymore, so we want to put it down on the bottom of this um, conversion factor. When we have grams of anything, it doesn't matter what it is, our only option is to convert into moles of that particular substance, a gram to mole conversion, which is done by using the molecular mass of the CO2. Getting the weights of each individual atom from the periodic table, carbon is 12 grams per mole, oxygen is 16 grams per mole, and there are two of them. So the molecular weight of CO2 is 12 plus 32, 44 grams for every one mole of CO2. And that's gonna uh, get rid of that gram CO2 unit. Now we have um, currently moles of CO2, but really what we're trying to figure out is the number of carbon atoms that we have, not CO2. So that means we want another step here. We want to get rid of that mole of CO2 unit. We want that unit to be gone. And what we want to convert into or what we want to figure out is just carbon atoms, just the carbon atoms. So um, what we're looking at here, this is a type of conversion that we haven't done in the past, but what we're asking ourselves here is how much carbon do we have in every single CO2 molecule. If we have one molecule of CO2, that has one carbon atom, as you know, and it has two uh, oxygen atoms, as you know, and we're not really care caring about oxygen, so let's ignore that. Every one carbon dioxide molecule has one carbon atom. And so this also means if we want to just change the units up, every one mole of CO2 has one mole of carbon. So now we are in units of moles of carbon. And even though I said here what we're really trying to figure out are how many atoms of carbon we have, as chemists, we can just stop it at this point. We don't need to convert our moles all the way down to atoms. Um, atoms and moles, both of these are units of quantity. How many do we have? And so it's perfectly fine to stop our calculation at moles of carbon. Although if you want to keep going, if you want to go all the way down to atoms of carbon using Avogadro's number, you are more than welcome to do that. The only thing that's different is that you're going to end up with a really big number over here because of Avogadro's number. So the steps that we've taken right here are going to allow us to calculate the moles of carbon atoms that we are working with. Let's get the calculator out and let's actually do the math on this. And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about exactly what that number represents. So the number that we get is 0.882 moles of carbon. And again, what we've just calculated is in our 38.8 gram sample of CO2, there are 0.882 moles of carbon atoms individually, which means that we started with 0.882 moles of carbon atoms in our hydrocarbon. So we've kind of a little bit figured out a portion of this hydrocarbons formula. We know that it is C with 0.882 moles of carbon. And our next task is to figure out how much hydrogen we have. So to solve for hydrogen, we're going to use the exact same procedure. We're going to take the amount of water, which is 31.7 grams of water. And we're going to get rid of that unit. So we want grams of water on the bottom so they cancel out and we want to convert into the units of moles of water. We're going to go to the periodic table to get this relationship. Hydrogen weighs 1 and we have 2 hydrogen atoms. Oxygen weighs 16. So the uh, molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. And so we have with this step converted into moles of water. We don't want moles of water, we want just moles of hydrogen. 
So we want moles of water on the bottom. We want moles of hydrogen on top. Look at the formula of water. Every one water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. So just going by the subscripts in the formula, there are two hydrogen atoms for every molecule of water. And we are now ready to figure out how many moles of hydrogen we have. 31.7 31 31 divided by 18 times 2 is 35, 3.52 moles of hydrogen. And so again, let's think about what we just did. 3.52 moles of hydrogen. Uh, what we determined was in our 31.7 grams of water, there were 3.52 moles of hydrogen, which means that we started with 3.52 moles of hydrogen. And so down here, we've determined that the empirical formula of this hydrocarbon is C.882 H. 3.52. Now we've done problems like this in the past um, with percent composition calculations and we talked about how this notation is weird notation. Chemists don't use um, these decimal points in molecular formulas so what we want to do is turn these numbers into nice numbers like we're used to seeing in a molecular formula and our strategy for doing that is to look at these numbers determine which one is the smallest and divide all of our numbers by the little one. So we're going to divide everything by 0.882, and that's gonna give us one mole of carbon. This process is just not changing the ratio of the carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms, but changing the value that we're using to reflect the ratio. So our hydrogen atom is now, it looks like 3.99, which we're just gonna call that four. Um, these should always round to nice, reasonable numbers. And so we've determined CH4, one carbon atom for every four hydrogen atoms. I wrote the wrong atom there, four moles of hydrogen. And this is the empirical formula for the hydrocarbon for this particular problem. So notice that this information, 14.1 grams, we never used that information at all. It's just kind of like more information than we needed to solve this problem. In the next video, I'm going to do a similar hydrocarbon problem, only this next one is going to um, have us calculating the molecular formula instead of the empirical formula.